Good Friday morning, dear saints. Great to see you again. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. And as we gather today, the psalm is Psalm 107 and the Old Testament reading. We are finishing up the book of Exodus, not today, but tomorrow. And as we do that, we again see God dwelling with his people in the tabernacle. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the word of the Lord from the psalmist this morning, Psalm 107. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw their deeds, the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous work in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Isn't that the way it is with us too, though? We, we set our path, we have everything decided, what we're going to do, and then it doesn't work. Our plans don't succeed. In the midst of it, in our fear, maybe our frustration, we cry out to the Lord, and then suddenly things work. It shouldn't surprise us that when we call on the name of the Lord, he keeps his promise and he is with us. Well, the Old Testament reading for today brings us almost to the end of the book of Exodus. Moses writes this. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished, and the people of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So they did. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent, and all of its utensils, its hooks, its frames, its bars, its pillars, and its bases, the covering of tanned ramskins and goatskins, and the veil of the screen, the ark of the testimony with its poles and its mercy seat, the table with all its utensils and the bread of presence, the lampstand of pure gold and its lamps, with its lamps set all of the utensils and the oil for the lamps, the golden altar, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, and the screen from the entrance of the tent, the bronze altar, and the grafting of bronze, its poles and utensils, the bases and its stand, the hanging of the courts, its pillars, and all the bases and the screens for the gate of the temple court, its cord and its pegs, and all of the utensils for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments for his sons, for their service as the priests. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so the people of Israel had done all of the work. And Moses saw all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded so they had done it, then Moses blessed them. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall erect a tabernacle in the tent of meeting, and you shall put the ark of the testimony, and you shall screen the ark with a veil, and you shall bring in the table and arrange it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and set up its lamps. And you shall put the golden altar for incense before the ark of the testimony, and set up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and the place and place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. 
and you shall set up the court all around and hang up the screen for the gate of the court. And you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle with it in its place and consecrate it and all of its furniture so that it might become holy. And you shall anoint the altar of burnt offerings and all its utensils and consecrate the altar so that the altar may become most holy. You shall also anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and shall wash them with water and put on Aaron the holy, and put on Aaron the holy garments and you shall anoint him and consecrate him and you may serve me as priest. You shall bring his sons also and put coats on them and anoint them as you have anointed their father that they might serve me as priests and their anointing shall admit them as a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. This Moses did to all that the Lord commanded him, so he did. This is the word of the Lord. Well, the work is done. The tabernacle is put together. It's brought before Moses. And now as Moses has the tabernacle, all of the pieces before him, now he's asked to bless them. And if you've been listening to all of the pieces that are going to be there, if we look carefully at what's in the tabernacle, it's really a picture of the church today. You remember that the Holy of Holies, that's the place where the Ark of the Covenant is. And in the last three chapters, four chapters of Exodus, we've heard about the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat quite a bit. And the Ark is there, the Ark of the Covenant, and the mercy seat in the center of it, and that is That is the altar. That is the place where God's presence dwells. We have the altar in the church too, where right now, where the pastor preaches and where God's gifts are given to us. In the, uh, as they put the tabernacle together, they also have the, uh, they also have the uh, uh, laver. And the laver is a a big basin, and that's going to be outside the Holy of Holies, and the basin is filled with water. Now, what do you think that might be? Well, there again, that's baptism. And the priests would come in, and before they started their duties, they would wash. And when they would bring a sacrifice in to offer it, they would wash the sacrifice in in the laver. All of that reminding us of the washing that Christ does for us that he washes us in the waters of baptism, that he makes us holy, that he connects us to the cross of Christ and gives us faith. And now our lives are a fragrant offering back to our God. In the Holy of Holies, there is the the bread of the presence, and that's exactly what it sounds like. There's bread in there. And as that bread is in there, it reminds us very much that right there next to the tabernacle, or excuse me, right there next to the, uh, the uh, Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat is the bread of presence. Right on the altar here is the very body and blood of Jesus given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. There are so many connections we can make between this right here, the tabernacle in the Old Testament, and the way that God has designed these spaces for us. Everything that goes on here in this sanctuary, everything has a purpose. When we designed it, it was pointing, everything that we do points us to Christ. And sometime, maybe for video shorts, we'll just take a look at each of the pieces and see how they point us again to Christ and the gifts that he's given to us. Well, this is the word of the Lord for us today as we gather And uh, join us again tomorrow. We'll finish up tomorrow the book of Exodus. Now, as we go forward our catechetical review for today, is the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, 
enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you chose to dwell physically with your people, that you developed a house for your presence, and that you called all people to be there. We thank you, Father, today that you have done the same, that you have promised to live and dwell with us, your presence here in this holy place where the altar and the baptismal font and the very body and blood of Christ is here for us. We pray that you would continue to strengthen us and make us holy, that we may continue to serve you all our days. Father, we pray that you hear us now for the sake of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, enjoy the day, and join us again tomorrow morning as we close out the book of Exodus. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.